G'day, welcome back to yet again another lure building episode. Last time we built the Stormarashi, as you saw last time before. Uh, in this one, we are going to go ahead and build a JJ Stump Jumper. So uh, that's one of the tried and true, you know, staple lures in any cod fisher's box. Uh, in for the Australian market, it's a very popular lure. So I thought I'd have a crack at one of those and see how we go. For those of you who don't know me or just tuning in for the first time, my name's Lee. This is the Fisherman's Office, and uh, I'll publish you know fishing content regularly, uh, gear videos, lure build videos like this one, uh, to help inspire you guys to get out and go fishing, basically. So without further ado, we'll get stuck into this build. So first off, we'll make the stencil for the lure. I do this by as you can see here, just getting some basic dimensions off the lure and eyeballing the rest, you know, using the shape uh, of the lure itself to trace out, uh, obviously removing all the hardware and stuff as well. Get the bib angle by that as well, uh, just by, you know, again, eyeballing it as well. Uh, there's probably more accurate ways to do this, guys, so this is just the way I've been doing it. So, yeah, um, after that, we'll just cut out the stencil and uh, we'll start the build. So we'll get into it now. Thanks for tuning in. Right, yeah, so I've got this bit of pine here, which I'm going to use to carve the lure because it's closest to the thickness here. Um, yeah, so it's not bad there. I've already cut out a stencil, which is in here, and I'm just going to square up some lines and markings for where I'm going to cut on the bandsaw and get that sorted. Glue my stencil on. Let me hit that with a bandsaw now as well. Just went and glued the uh, top profile here. I'm going to cut now. Cut from this end. This is the beginnings of a stompe. I'm also going to cut the uh, slot right now for the uh, bib. There's a weenie little slot there. That'll do that. I'll grind out or I'll, I'll file out something. It's a bit more space so I can see. Oh, so I can get the bib in, sorry. So that's that one. Okay, so I start small, 3 mil drill bit. Bit of a step up this one. 9.5. Final step up to 12 now, which I'm going to do it all in reverse. Let's put you over here. And that is where. The rattle chamber will go. Just poke that in there, make sure it goes in. Which it doesn't. <laughs> That's better. Now it goes in. I'll actually glue this in when it's time. This is a bit of a lighter, I'm going for a bit of a lighter rattle with this one. Another twist on a hole. No, that's not the right 
right side. That's the right side. So once. <sighs> I found, learned, that it's much easier to cut holes and drill stuff when, it, when you've got flat surfaces. Because if it's, you've carved beforehand, it's like an asshole, to be frank, <laughs> to try and do it. So, yeah. Um, keeping things centered is a lot easier when you got straight lines so yeah definitely happy with that at this stage i'm going to start carving or making some chamfer lines and then can carve it and go from there <laughs> So I've carved the shape and uh, refined it a little bit with some sandpaper. Nothing really special going on there, but um, there's a little bit of a nick, a bit of a chip in the in the mouth area there, which is a bit disappointing. But um, uh, just where that bit of grain sits, it's uh, a little bit fragile in that spot, so it's just sort of fallen out. Not really sure how I'm going to fix that at the moment, but uh, that's pretty much that. I might actually have to fix it after I glue the bib in. Uh, but it might actually be okay after it's filled up with some resin anyway, so we'll see how we go. But um, a little ways to go yet. I've still got to keep sanding and refine that shape some more. Um, looking pretty good. So, yeah. Yeah. So I've got to sand it down to a, about a shape that I'm fairly happy with and it's uh, fairly symmetrical so looking good. I'll make some twist eyes and I'm going to glue the rattle chamber in now so uh, that's what stage we're at and uh, yeah once the I'll, I'll pile up a fair bit of super glue and baking soda on here just so I can reshape uh, to make it match you know what it's supposed to look like as I don't want you know a massive gaping hole in the side of my lure so yeah We'll keep doing that and i'll uh, also glue in i'll, I'll resin in the uh, the twist eyes uh once that's done i'll then you know dip it in some sealer and that'll be left overnight and there we that now this bit <laughs> looks messy I reckon. Not my best glue job ever, but we'll make it work. This is what we do. plan it's twist eye time what I do with this this is actually 316 grade 1.2 mil I think thick annealed stainless steel wire so all i do is i get this little nail at the end of the board here whack that around just like that to make the start of your eye and i just whack my electrical drill chuck on this end of things and uh, as slow and as controlled as possible i twist the wires together so that's how i make the twist eyes The electric drill you get them nice and tight evenly wound strands which i really like so i like it that's all she wrote i reckon 
perfect. Now you go in and after you've glued and set, glue set with these, I'll just uh, I'll bend these straight so that they're sitting right on point. So because you know that can affect the tuning of the lure as well. That's one. Time to get the rest done. There's all the hook hangers and toe point. Beauty. I just got to get some resin set up and I can glue them in. So. Plenty on all the little thready, thready looking bits. Bit on the surface of the hole and I just whack him in. So it is five minute epoxy, so you could leave it five minutes and, and check it, but I'll leave it about 15 to 20 uh, just for it to harden a little bit more. It's still a bit tacky and soft, uh, probably needs 15 or 16 hours completely to cure, I would think. Uh, but it sets fairly hard within that five to five to ten minutes uh, range, so that's where I'll just leave it and I'll just dip it in the sealer after that point. I'm just going to go with this. Uh, carbothane clear here which is just to seal the wood and um, I'll sand it and then probably um, give it another coat of clear um, tomorrow and then uh, we'll probably actually I've got to fix the lure bib slot first yeah actually you know the lure bib slot in after I get these uh, after these are set a bit more that's the next step I think so, little bib slot next. Now, what I didn't realize before is somewhere along the way, uh, while I was talking to you guys, the toe point flipped around the wrong way. Well, not the wrong way, but not the way I was intending to have it. It's not the end of the world. I can still make that work. So, uh, it'll be the only, hopefully the only real physical dis difference between the, uh, you know, the actual lure and, and mine. So, um, yeah. But I'm going to get cutting on the uh, bib slot um, a little bit more width out of that so that it'll fit in and uh, we'll go from there. One thing I need to get is a, a thin file. I don't know if you use sandpaper, but uh, I don't have one yet, so this will do. Beautiful. That's going to sit in there nicely. As I was saying before, I like a bit of resistance in that slot because it just makes it easier for it not to move. Uh, as easily when you're um, uh, when you actually put the bib in, so um, that's why I've done that like that. Uh, and this blade here is perfect for that 1.5 mil Lexan. So um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty happy to use this one. This is actually a oh, I can't remember what it's called. It's a Bunnings brand Craft Rice. It's one of these. Just like a really cheap fine tooth saw and it's got this um, saw here as well so that's two pieces you can uh, you can pull that off and, and use that I use this for cutting a balsa wood actually when I'm using the balsa but uh, I've been using pine a lot more and I've got the bandsaw so it makes it a lot easier to cut that so uh, that is that now I'm gonna do some more sanding on this actually because it's Still got some little bit of rough stuff, but um, I'll get that sorted off camera and then um, we'll come back to dip it. Yeah, so I'm just going to blob this in. Couple of nibs. So 
Lewis Hearn is really good. Uh, not perfect, but I, it just does what it needs to do. So, you know, that's all it really has to. So I'm happy with that. And I did do a video, a quick time-lapse video on building this, uh, going through how I did it. If you want to check that out, I'll leave a card up here somewhere, on top of the screen. You can look at that. So uh, I'm going to let this turn overnight and do some sanding tomorrow and then uh, reseal again. And uh, that'll be that. Two coats of sealer, um, sand it up, and then it's ready for the bib to be set in. And that's that. Aha! It's bib time. So a little sheet of polycarbonate Lexan. This is the uh, bib, so I'm just gonna basically glue stick this on here. I'll bandsaw. Uh, a fair bit of it, and then I'll cut it with uh, with the um, Stanley knife. So um, you'll see how that's done in a minute. All I do with this is usually get a straight edge or a ruler, put it along the line here. I don't know if you can see that. I just put it along the where the line is for the for the um, stencil here on the uh, template, and then just run the blade over it a couple of times. So uh, Hey Tim, how are you? Hello, mate. What's happening? Not a lot. You got a lot? Oh, you got more, have you? Oh, you're a legend. Hey. Oh, they look like good bits. Got the snazzy bits to work with there, mate. Clean as whistles. Awesome. Love it. Fresh off the saw today, mate. Awesome. Thanks, mate. Awesome. Do you want plenty more? Or are you gonna... Oh, man, if you've got more, um, I'm always going to use timber, so. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Uh, the benefits of having a neighbour that's doing renovations is if there's a lot of spare timber. So I just got a heap of heap of timber uh, handed over, which is good. Thanks for that, Tim. I've lived in this neighbourhood for 10 years. I haven't lived in a, as good a neighbourhood as I've ever lived in here. I'm renting here. And, uh, yeah, I will never move from this area unless I buy a house. So that is pretty much it. Just because of that reason right there, you've got good neighbours and make a huge difference to where you live, I reckon. So I've got it close, most of the material off, and then I'll just hit it with a file to get those jagged edges off, as you can see. And um, the plastic backing doesn't make it, so it makes it a little worse almost. So that's all I've got rear here. So I'll just smooth that over and uh, she looks pretty schmick after that. <laughs> So fairly level, bib completely submerged, basically just behind the bib. It's, always, oh, it's like identical. That's so good. Just the right amount of weight in there. Perfect. <laughs> that looks so good. Happy with that. Now I may just ruin this thing. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm gonna have a crack. Going to try and bend this Lexan sort of into the middle here a little bit. And that sort of did something.
look a bit more starting to look a bit more like what it would well that's pretty bloody close actually <laughs> oh yeah all right so this is the original bib I'll pop that in and see how it looks so that's what the original bib looks like <clears throat> and this is my homemade bib <laughs> oh, pretty bloody close Hell yes. That looks crazy awesome. Obviously, whoops. Obviously the, um, you know, you got this big star in here because you can't, obviously I think with this, this is because it's been groove cut here. They've actually just, they've bent it from the inside here instead of this way, which means it's just going to be one bend and then one bend, if you know what I mean. So this is going to look cleaner every day. Uh, besides that, they've probably got machines to help them do this. I would, I would assume uh, being... A much more mass-produced lure so but I think for a homemade pretty cool here's the timber that I got off your neighbor heap of pine blocks <laughs> yeah that's awesome leave a like on the video if you've got sick neighbors like I do I love my neighbors <laughs> Ooh, wait, let's it. it looks balanced Maybe it's too buoyant. Maybe I don't have enough weight in the belly. See if I can put more weight in it. See if that does anything. So, I went away and... Well, it's a bit echoey in here. I'll come back into the office. I went away. I put in some more weight into the belly. That didn't work. It made it... Not any less unstable. Uh, it, it definitely slowed it down, I guess you would say. Um, wasn't crazy good. Um, removed the weight completely and improved it a little bit. Then I went back and I had another look at the toe points, uh, whereabouts they were sitting. Uh, I noticed that the because the toe point wasn't vertical like it was meant to put it, uh, as you remember, it got sort of twisted around horizontal like this. I was sitting a bit lower, so I've pulled that up and I've made it straight and center line with the in, uh, with the body of the lure, which helps with the tuning as well. Uh, but I also just had another quick look at the whole body itself and just try to make sure that it was um, uh, symmetrical, of course, all the way. I, I thought I got it pretty good before. Um, but I noticed there was a bit of a high spot to the right side of the sorry the left side of the lure so basically that just means there's more volume there which means it's going to want to roll and move and move to that side uh just that's the way it works with these things if you don't um if you don't have them completely symmetrical they behave exactly like that so um i've taken away some material i've just resealed it with some super glue just to stop the um uh stop the you know the wood getting wet whack the bib back in again and just recheck to make sure that's all straight and that's all good uh, and i'm going to swim it now and we'll see how it looks now so all right so whack it in <laughs> look at that now that it's got no weight in it but it's literally just that little high spot in the body there has made it all all the difference i'm taking that out and uh, made it more symmetrical and the toe point obviously moving a little bit is, is obviously helping as well so that's a whole lot better it looks way more like a stump jumper now than it ever has probably a little bit of instability there still tiniest little bit but i'm pretty happy with that considering again it's my own lure it's homemade and you know i can make another one if i want to
<laughs> so cool. I'll get the other, the original stump you just out again and uh, Camaro for you guys. I think that was a good way to do it last time. So here's the original stumpy. Very, very similar swim. Like I said, I think that my one's the tiniest little bit less stable than this one. But I can live with that. I will try with that little bit of weight in the belly again just to see if that helps with stability because I took the weight out to see if that worked. But, um, but that look, looks and works pretty similar. Very, very happy with that. So Awesome. So all in all, guys, I was very, very happy with how this build turned out. It was definitely one of the more challenging lures that I've built so far, with the exception of a wake bait that I tried in an earlier video. Um, yeah, so I'm glad that, you know, I was persevering with the shape and getting things, you know, dialed in to make it swim better. It definitely swims much, much better as you saw before. So pretty happy with that. I ended up putting a tiny, tiny bit of weight in the belly as well. Just, just the size of it, like a small, small split shot. That's it. Um, that was more just to fill the hole and give it a bit of casting weight. It didn't make any difference to the action at all. It was all the reshaping, um, or the refining of the shape and, uh, adjusting of the toe point on the, uh, lure. So yeah, keep that in mind, guys. If you see it not working, just try to nut out why. Um, you know, exactly what I've done. I know a couple of you guys that are following these videos and, you know, trying out your own lures and stuff like that. So just persevere with it and, uh, take your time. That's all I can really say. Um, if you want to ask me some more questions, I'm happy to help. I mean, I'm not that experienced, but just, you know, throw me a question. And uh, there's a couple of Facebook groups I'm involved with, which are, you know, full of good information as well. Um, I'll leave links to those down in the description if you want to check them out. Uh, next video, I'll be um, announcing the prize uh, to the FO Cog Crank Challenge giveaway. Uh, if you would like to get involved in that still, there is still time. Jump across to my Instagram and give me a follow. Leave a post on your Instagram of your favourite Murray Cod crankbait um, that rattles and use the hashtag FOCODCRANK. That's very important so I can track that. I will share it on my story also. And, um, yeah, that's all about the new entry as well. Must be following me though, guys, so make, make sure you do that. Um, yeah, so if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, of course, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Just keep flicking. <laughs> Look at that.